Hey guys, this is Jim K and 4YCD and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. What I've got going on here is software we call DSD+. So you may have heard us talking about this on Coffee and Ham Radio or on my channel when Ape and I did a scanner stream the other week. This is scanner software. Um, it will scan pretty much any digital mode that is common in common use anywhere in the United States and Europe, for example. It does P25, NXDN, Fusion, D-Star, DMR, um, all the digital modes. So the software itself is cheap. Um, you can pay about, I think, $10 a year for updates. $25 gets you lifetime updates on the software. I believe it'll run without paying anything. There's a free version. It just doesn't have the cutting, more cutting edge features that the, uh, the paid version gets you. And I'll put a link to the website and all that in the description below. So what I've got going on here, and I know this is, this is kind of a busy screen. So I'm tuned to, uh, the Montgomery, Alabama Metro communications cooperative, blah, blah, blah system right now and this is the data stream coming across on the data channel now i am using one sdr dongle um, a low-end 25 dollar sdr dongle off of amazon this isn't even a rsp1 or a fancy dongle this is the bottom of the barrel and so what we see here is the data stream going on and i'm gonna i'm gonna minimize this window for now because it's just a lot of stuff to look at i'm gonna make some of the other windows bigger in a second here is our spectrographic representation of the signals we're receiving. And of course, we're on a P25 system, so we're monitoring the control channel and we're getting a data call and sharing that on one SDR. This will work with multiple SDRs at the same time. And on a trunk system like P25, it would be better if you were using two SDRs. Um, and that's certainly doable. You just need a multi-coupler or some way to split your antenna signal or run multiple antennas. So this is kind of a nice to look at screen. Um, you can also manually tune by typing in a frequency on this screen. Um, so we're going to get rid of that screen. Uh, before I talk about the others, the software itself comes in a zip file. There's no, there's no Windows install. This is basically, as you see it, a half command line DOS style application and some windowed application. Um, there's multiple programs within the actual software package uh, that get called by various batch files. It depends on what your options are for what kind of SDR radio you're using. So there's different options for an air spy versus a straight up RTL SDR kind of dongle, whether you're using one SDR to decode and control channel or two. You don't have to have two. And if you're not monitoring trunking systems, doesn't matter. You don't really need to. Um, the only time two dongles really comes in handy is if you're trying to monitor a busy trunked system, the performance will be better. And I may do a follow-up um, in a week or so and try and get a setup with two SDR dongles and we'll see if that performs any better. But our system here is not super, super busy, so I don't think it's really a big deal. Um, so basically, you unzip the software into a folder on your Windows computer, and you click some batch files, and that's literally how you start this software. Again, depending on what your um, configuration is, which SDR you have, and are you using a combined control channel voice channel, or are you using um, separate SDRs for, for the control in the data channel. And again, that's only for the P25 or DMR trunk tier three stuff. This decodes and monitors Fusion and DMR and DSTAR and NXDN and P25 phase one, which is all stuff us hams can use. So you don't need two dongles if you're scanning the local DMR repeater or your hotspot for certain talk groups. Um, you know, you can scan multiple hotspots for certain talk groups. So depending on how you have things set up uh, at your QTH and how you set this up, 
so I could have this thing jump in between a D star hotspot that's uh, on 30 Charlie and a YSF fusion hotspot that's on Toads 55295 and a DMR that's on, um, I don't know, Alabama Link. And so this one application will scan those three modes just like a scanner would, except it's just software and it's very, very inexpensive software. You just need to have a computer that's able to run it, which is pretty much any computer around there. I'm running this particular instance in a virtual machine under parallels on a, on a Mac. So um, the interface is, let's call it rudimentary. It is not flashy. If I had one thing I wanted to complain about with DSD Plus is that the interface is, um, is not pretty. It's, it's just flat out ugly. So we can't... Um, we can't embiggen this anymore. Let's see. Okay, so I've got this zoomed in now so we can look at the actual, I guess for want of a better term, um, monitor screen. This would be similar to your scanner front screen. Um, this screen here will show us what talk groups are active and what modes they're in and who's talking to whom and so on and so forth. So I'm on a P25 system, so these are all uh, system users for the Montgomery County P25 system. We have the Alabama State University Police. We have Prattville. That's a little town up the road from us. We have the Alabama Department of Public Safety, um, which is interesting. They haven't updated the radio reference database. They're not called DPS anymore. They're called ALEA, Alabama Law Enforcement Agency, but nobody's updated the database. All this data that we're seeing here comes out of cross-reference with radio reference. So you can manually update some of this stuff. These are all text files that come with the system. And I could go out there and I could edit it and update it to say Aaliyah instead of DPS if I cared, but I don't. Um, so this will keep scrolling and it will show us um, all the data that the system is receiving and what channels... Um, there's the Montgomery Airport Police um, channel there, and so on and so forth. And you can hit the, and this is going to scroll, you can hit the question mark and get on-screen help for the different options. So a lot of this stuff you can change on the fly um, within the application. If we look up here at the menu, and this is the semi-Windows part of this application. So that's basically the control interface. Um, the last thing I want to show you, let me drag this window over. And so this is our active system scanner window. This is the frequency window kind of deal. And while this other window that I was showing you gives me a whole bunch of data, we're not displaying all that data in this window. This window will tell us what control channel is active. And SCC is secondary control channel. It'll tell me who's talking on a given uh, frequency. Some of these don't have names. I, I, For whatever reason, they're not picked up. I could go look them up and find out, generally on radio reference. <clears throat> and, um, and it'll show you the status, what the priority is. Are they locked out? Um, I think the default is probably 50. This guy is uh, apparently talking quite a lot. Here's another number only one. And this data is generally available on radio reference. So these are the active calls in progress. And again, that shows me my control channel. So if for some reason I stopped this or had to reboot the computer or whatever, I know right where it is. One of the options, let me get rid of that. One of the options with DSD Plus is that it will save the current system I'm on. And I can tell it, when I start you back up, I want you to come right back to the system that I last was scanning. So in the case of something like a P25 or a DMR Tier 3 system, or an NXDN trunk, any of the trunked style systems, that's great because you don't have to re-hunt where your control channel was necessarily and you jump right back in to scanning. And again, this will also scan straight up analog channels just like any scanner you get from Unidin or Scanner Master or any, anywhere. Zip scan, doesn't matter. Obviously it scans analog and it scans and decodes all the digital voice modes. It does not decrypt. And you'll notice Montgomery Fire scrolling through there. Those are encrypted. So even if I wanted to listen to Montgomery Fire, I'll never get it. 
because it's encrypted. And you'll see right there, if you can catch that before it scrolls, it says ENC group call, which tells me that that particular call is encrypted. There's no way to decrypt it. Montgomery Sheriff's Office, for example, is not encrypted, but it's encoded via P25 Phase 2. So that's how that works. I'm going to pull up radio reference real quick. We'll take a look at it. Stand by. Okay, so I've pulled up radio reference here for us to look at. And this is where you can get data about systems. And guys, I'm picking on the Montgomery P25 system just because it's local to me and I can talk about it easily because I was part of it. This data and the way DSD works will work on just about any system wherever, at your place, as long, again, as it's not encrypted. Um, so the, where DSD gets data from and where I can use as a source to update the files in DSD manually if I want to is here from Radio Reference, and that's the best place for this kind of stuff. Um, you can go to Databases. We can tell it Amateur Radio Database. We can look up Call Signs. And we'll find the Toads Club, and it's active, and it's located in Luck, Wisconsin, which is also known as South Canada. So there's just a, a ton of information on, um, on radio reference. We could retrieve call signs by zip code 36043, except you missed the 3, 36043, retrieve. And these are all the hams that are in my zip code, and there's me. So <clears throat> it's a great reference. It's, it gets its data source from pretty much the same place that QRZ does. It lets you slice and dice it a little better. I think the interface is a little better than QRZ, but there it is. And so this website, in conjunction with something like DSD+, Plus, if you add in a $25 a year subscription for... Um, radio reference and you add in a $25 lifetime cost for DSD plus and you add in a $25 SDR dongle, you're at 75 bucks. You have a scanner that scans every mode analog and digital out there. You have access to all the most current data for what to monitor. And you have um, a scanner that will work in any computer, laptop or whatever. This doesn't have to be on a desktop. You could put this whole operation in a laptop easily because the only hardware you're carrying with you is a SDR dongle. At work, I have a $25 SDR dongle and some cheap little, I mean, junk Chinese antenna off of Amazon that came with the SDR kit that I bought. Nothing special at all. And I can monitor Montgomery fine on that. Of course, I'm also in the city at that point. But in any case, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. Guys, I think this has gone on way too long. I appreciate your time. I hope you stuck with me. I hope you got something out of this. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And make sure you have rung the bell so that you get notified whenever I post any new content. Guys, thank you all very much. Have a great day. 73.